tripod situation is precarious. <laughs> another video. Today we're doing my book haul. Spoiler alert, it's right there. Let's do this thing. It is my March book haul. I bought too many books. It was a big release month. April should be calmer. Not only can I like stress, I, I don't tend to stress shop. I tend to stress forget to shop. But so not only can I browse less, I'm also like differently occupied. So I'm not religiously checking booktopia <laughs> so we should have way less i've got pre-orders but that should basically be it for april and it's a way slower release month so april's haul is going to be a lot different but uh march's is a little bit insane let's get started <laughs> okay, so there are three stacks here if you can't tell so i'm gonna work my way through them so first off we have the vanishing deep by astrid schultz this is um, a new release from Astrid Schultz. She wrote Four Dead Queens, which I read when it came out. And I liked it, but I didn't really love it. It had some world building issues. Um, and it just kind of read a bit debut-ish. But the premise for this freaking sold me. We follow Tempe, who lives in a world of water. And her um, older sister mysteriously drowns and dies and she is saving up money to bring her life for 24 hours that's a thing you can do in this world um and then but she thinks her sister killed her parents so she's trying to wake her up not to like have her sister back for 24 hours but to solve the her parents murder because something's going on and she doesn't know why her sister killed her parents so that is kind of the premise of this. That sounds so cool. The sci-fi elements are like, yes, I'm so excited. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to this, but I'm very excited about it. Next up, we have Sword of Fire by Catherine Kerr. I don't really know too much about this. I kind of impulse bought it based on the cover and a few recommendations that it was like the face, adult face story that everyone was looking for after The Cruel Prince. Um, it's decently short. It's only like 400 pages. It looks even thinner than that, but it is 400-ish pages. Pages must be pretty thin. Yeah, they're pretty thin. Um, and it is a face story. It's about, oh, I know. Um, and it is, uh, Irish mythology, as a lot of fate is. My friend Paige from Pages and Pages gifted me a couple of things this month and the because she's absolutely lovely. And the first of those is All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. This is um, a magic school witch thing, I think. A hidden academy for the magically gifted. That's what pulled me to it also. Charlie Jane Anders is a trans or non-binary, I think it might be non-binary. There might be a non-binary author. No, maybe trans. Um, I remember, um, Cece, I remember them being on a list of trans and non-binary authors. Um, and so I have a little, I washi taped in a little, the little sticker from Paige. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited for this. Uh, we might buddy read it at some point. I just tried to get back onto my bed and apparently I don't have piles anymore. <sighs> okay. We're back. Um, yeah, so that was All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders, which Paige gifted to me. The other book that Paige gifted to me is here, and that is Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is a historical fiction story kind of told from the point of view of Aphrodite. Everyone's been raving over it. I am excited. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but I do enjoy what I read a lot of the time, and Paige and I are definitely buddy reading this for the owls. She is very intimidated by historical fiction, so I'm excited. I think this is, I think it's YA, so I think it will be very approachable for her. And we've tabbed out when we're gonna be reading this, so I'm very excited about it. Next up, we have a sequel. This is First Class Murder by Robin Stevens, and this is the third book in the Murder Most Unladylike series. I read the second book last month or the month, no, in February, I think. Um, and so I needed to pick up the next one so I can continue the series. I plan on reading this in May for the Believe-a-thon. So 
So I'm definitely going to be reading this pretty soon. I'm so excited about it. I'm loving this series. They're just such fun middle grade murder mysteries with actual murder and I just appreciate them so much. Next up we have The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. This is a um, <laughs> queer adult fantasy. It's an orc fantasy, um, which I've never really read before other than like, you know, Lord of the Rings, which is not like a positive orc fantasy. Um, this does have a lot of like language stuff, which could be interesting to get my head around, but I don't tend to mind language stuff in books, either real languages or made up ones. Just, I never pronounce them the way they're meant to be pronounced. I just make it up as I go along, but the meaning, we're good. Um, so I've heard some people say this is really boring, but other people say this is like the best fantasy they've read in a long time. And that the female female romance in this is everything. So I'm here for it. Um, I have the audiobook uh, on hold at my library. So I'm thinking I might do a like read along with this and maybe that'll help even with the language stuff um, when it eventually comes in at my library. So we're gonna try that out. Next up we have The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. This is a new release sci-fi. Um, it's like a um, futuristic Earth and it's controlled by an alien race. And we follow, what is the cat Oh here? I don't even know. We follow, this is Narcissa. If you haven't met Narcissa before, we call her Sissy. She's a little crazy, but not as crazy as Bellatrix. So, but Bellatrix is not, in, Trixie is not in here at the moment, but Sissy is, is here. Um, so we follow Ellie, who has this secret underground library because books are illegal. And then Morris, who's born in a lab, presumably one of these aliens, raised to be emotionless, but he's super into music or something, and they're gonna like save the world or whatever. This is super pink, and I freaking love it. I've heard mixed things, but I really wanted to support this author, so I definitely pre-ordered this, and I'm excited to read it. Obviously another new release, because most of these are. It was a big new release month. We have Docile by K.M. Sparza. This is another one I'm not sure what I'm going to think about it, but I'm really curious to read it. It is a um, dystopian where debts, uh, it says there's no consent under capitalism, and uh, essentially you can sell yourself into slavery to clear your family's debts because debt is passed down. Um, and everyone's getting these like ridiculous debts. So people are selling themselves into slavery as a docile to um, free their like free their family from their debts. Um, it has forthright depictions and discussions of rape and sexual abuse. It has a content warning on the back, which I'm very happy about. Um, this reminds me a lot of a fan fiction I read a really long time ago, and that's where it's kind of piqued my interest. As I kind of want to see how it plays off things in like in the way that, that fan fiction did. Um, so I loved that fan fiction when I read it when I was like 15, um, which also had like slavery and like how that all played out in a like dystopian set. It, it was a whole thing. Um, I'm really interested to see how this plays in. Apparently though there's some criticisms. I obviously haven't read it, so I don't really know the actual context. There's been some criticisms around how it fails to discuss race. Like it's got good shit in here, but really doesn't touch on race where race could have, should have been really important and interesting to the narrative. So that's something to consider. Um, it also has dubious consent and non-consensual um, sexual things in this. Obviously he's a like sex slave. So keep that into consideration if you're interested in this. Um, it is a bit chunky. It is like almost 500 pages, but I am excited to read it, but hesitant. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it or not. Next up we have One Wheel Magic by Sarah Gailey. I am so excited to read this. This is the, um, for, uh, the, 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 Sarah Gailey's YA debut. Um, this is a, uh, like contemporary magic kind of setting. Um, and I believe it's this girl group, and one of them's trying to lose her virginity, but instead ends up killing the boy by accident. Um, and they're all trying to cover it up. And that just sounds so good! Um, I'm so excited. Reminds me a bit of, like, season three of American Horror Story. Um, 
I can't wait to read this. I was going to try and get to it in March, but it just didn't happen. So I'm also going to, if I manage to get through all my hours, read this like in April. Um, but otherwise it will be like early May probably, but I'm so excited to read this. Another release I was trying to get to in March, but just didn't happen. We have The June Boys by Court Stevens. This is a um, kidnapping mystery. Uh, Courtney Stevens does a whole heap of different stuff. Um, like I'm reading another one of her books for the owls. Um, and this, I believe people have had mixed reviews about this, but I feel like having read those mixed reviews, I will come into it. There was like minor spoilers in the reviews that I think will help me read this clearer and like enjoy it more, which I'm very glad about. Um, so I'm interested to read this. Uh, it is a like, yeah, kidnapping mystery. I love that kind of shit. It sounds so good. Then I bought uh, three Brandon Sanderson books. Um, we acknowledge the discourse. We'll buy anyway because I'm not very good at separating stuff. Um, but we picked up, I picked up three things. We have Warbreaker, um, which is the uh, another one of his standalone fantasies that I think is uh, it's part of the Cosmere universe, but I and I believe it's getting more books or a potential sequel or something. But it's currently a standalone and one of the first ones written in the universe. Um, I need to read Elantris and then I'm going to read this. But I just they were at the bookstore and like I'm going to read them all eventually. So I kind of broke my rule, which is true of a lot of Brandon. I have a lot more Brandon Sanderson than my like only have the next book in the series rule would imply. Um, but we break that for these covers because I know I'm going to read them all anyway and I know I'm going to love them and they all match. So we got that. We also got Arcanum Unbounded, which is a collection of short stories from the Cosmere. Um, and this was kind of the reason I went in because I want to start reading a few things from this um, just as I go and where I fit in like with what I've already read. Um, so I'm going to be reading some things from this, but I'll just like pick up individual stories. Does that make sense? And then the other Brandon Sanderson I picked up was Firefight. This is the sequel to Steelheart, which I read in January, maybe February, um, which I enjoyed. And I was excited to continue with the series. This is obviously not part of the Cosmere. It's a sci-fi um, superhero kind of story. Uh, but I've read the first one and then the like 0.5 short story. So I wanted to pick up this one. Okay, we hear there. Uh, next up we have Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. This is an Anna Karenina retelling um, and obviously featuring Asian main characters and I know the audiobook is narrated by Jenna Ashwood so I'm really tempted to see if I can get my hands on the audiobook and listen along with this as well because I love Jenna Ashkowitz. Um So I think that could be really fun. Might do that. We'll see. Will I spend an audible credit on it? We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to read this. Then we have The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. This is, I think this was like one of the first books Marie Lu physically wrote, but obviously not the first she got published and it's very different from her first series. Um, this is a Mozart story. It's following Mozart's sister and the magical world that they had when they were children. So it says, I am the sister, the other Mozart, and her story is mine. Um, I love this cover. I love that premise. It just all kinds of, uh, kind of adds up to something really good for me. Um, and yeah, I love music stories. I love magic. So we're freaking here for this. A book I literally bought as a cover buy, and then everyone else started talking about the cover. Like, I had multiple people send me like, wow, look at this cover. I was like, I know. I went to the bookstore, and I saw it, and I wanted it for the cover. And that is Monstrous Heart by Claire McKenna. It's a debut. I've never heard anything about it online until after I'd already bought it. But, like, look at this cover. It's obviously a... It says a gothic tale of intrigue on high seas. Um, so, like... Pirates? Gothic pirates? Oh, it just sounds so good. Um, it's like, I don't know. I might hate this, but also that cover is gorgeous. <laughs> I think it's an adult. It's a Harper Voyager, so I think it's a like adult fantasy, gothic, romance, pirates. 
maybe something high seas -y. Next up, we have a couple of sequels. We have We Unleashed the Merciless Storm by Taylor K. Mejia. This is the sequel to We Set the Dark on Fire, which I really enjoyed. It's a um, Latinx dystopian uh, in a world where men, powerful men, have two wives. One that's essentially a baby mama and one that's like a political assistant. Um, and the two wives of this one, like, corrupt guy fall in love and have an uprising um and it's just a duology i think though apparently everyone who's read this is like really is there not a book three so uh, i'm scared i was gonna try and read this in march as well but it kind of got time kind of got away from me so i will be trying to read this as soon as possible i really enjoyed book one so i'm excited to see where book two goes then we have night of the dragon by julie kagawa this is book three in the Shadow of the Fox trilogy. This is a, um, it's kind of like a anime fantasy. It kind of, it has a lot of similar vibes to say like Avatar. Um, it follows, our main character is Yumeko, who's a kitsune, and she's trying to protect the Scroll of a Thousand Prayers. And then we also have Kage, who is an assassin. And it's their kind of like, kind of like a love story, but it's mostly an adventure story. Um, and I really enjoyed book one and two. April and I buddy read book two, I think. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, so we might buddy read this one again if we are picking it up at the same time. But I'm excited to see how the series ends. <laughs> um, it, the second one was pretty intense, so I'm interested to see where this one goes. The next sequel is the girl, uh, is Sword in the Stars, not Girl in the Stars, Sword in the Stars by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This is a sequel to Once in Future, which is a um, sci-fi retelling of King Arthur if Arthur was a woman. Um, and it's super queer and it was super fun. It um, It's kind of like fast paced and doesn't have much like slow moments, I guess. I, I don't know. It's It's got a weird pacing, but it was really fun. Um, and I really enjoyed book one. So um, I'm pretty sure this is just a duology. So I am keen to pick this up and finish the series um, and have a great time while doing it. Um, if my pre-order of um, Ruthless Gods doesn't come in in time for the owls, I will probably read this to fulfill the charms challenge, something with a white cover. But I want to read some April releases in April. So um, we'll do Ruthless Gods if it comes in, but this could be a good backup. Some books I've already read. We have Finna by Nino Cipri. This is a short novella um, following an Ikea kind of. It's not it's not called Ikea, but it's basically Ikea. And there's these um, interdimensional portals that pop up because of the layout of an Ikea. Like it's just prone to portals. And we follow um, Ava, who's a staff member. She's just had a breakup um, and her ex Jules um is one of her and Jules are assigned to go in and say go into this wormhole to save a grandma who's toddled in there um it was so funny I talked about it more in my wrap up I give this five stars if you wanted to know I would totally recommend it it's so good obviously I also bought Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare this is the first book in the Last Hours trilogy which is the new Shadowhunters trilogy um again I, I've read this I talked about it in my wrap up um what well, much more do you need to know in a haul about Chain of Gold I bought it I read it check out my wrap up same with House of Earth and Blood um, by Sarah J Maas. This is the first book in her new series, Crescent City, which really they should have reversed the like intensity of these titles because no wonder everyone's just calling it Crescent City. Um, again, I've already read this. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. Um, it is huge and beastly, but this is an adult um, fantasy. It was good. <laughs> Check out my wrapper. <laughs> I feel like everyone's heard about those two, so I don't, I don't know how much more to describe. Next, some books that I'm definitely reading in April. We have Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This is a Irish fantasy following witches. I think it's like an urban fantasy. We follow Dana, who is struggling to cope with her somatic OCD. 
the aftermath of being outed as bisexual in her conservative Irish town and the return of her long absent mother who barely seems like a parent. Um, and she's finally becoming a full witch, but her plans are complicated when another coven, rumoured to have a sordid history with black magic, arrives in town with premonitions of death. Um, so it's got Irish folklore, which is... It looks so good. I've only heard good things about it, and I'm incredibly excited to read this. We have The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. This is the new book in her new spin-off duology. Um, this is a sapphic story. Um, I understand this problem. I can comprehend the problems with the original trilogy. I did enjoy them, but like in hindsight, you know, you know. But um, the so I enjoyed her writing enough that I was interested in picking this up, and this cover is freaking gorgeous. Um, we'll see what I think about this. Some um, Mahana, especially, who's a queer reviewer um, who reads a lot of sapphic romance, really enjoyed this. So I'm excited to pick it up on that front. I'm coming in open-minded, but critical. <laughs> we'll see. Another little short book we have, The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nagi Vo. This is a, another little novella, um, and this is based on Chinese mythology. Feminist high fantasy in imperial, uh, like reminiscent of imperial China. Um, this is really short, so I haven't really looked into the specific plot of this one, but I'm definitely going to be reading this in April, and I'm super excited about it. And finally, I don't know why this was the last thing on the pile, other than that it was just at the bottom. We have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. This is a, um, I think it's kind of like an urban-y fantasy we follow Linus, who's a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth, which is 100% what sold me. Um, it's a male male romance, I think, and he's dealing with this group of six dangerous magical children um, in this orphanage on a distant island. Um, it sounds so good. I love the idea of like magical caseworkers. <laughs> Um, it just sounds fantastic, and I'm definitely going to be reading this in April as well. So those are all the books in this book haul. I don't even know how I'm going to film this one now. Um, it could get interesting. But thank you so much for watching. Um, hope, uh, let me know if you have behold any of these and would like to chat about them. I don't know. Let me know um, if you're interested in any of them, if there's anything you think I might have missed that's come out recently. No, don't do that. I'll buy too many books. Don't do that. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!